All right, today, man, we got Elliot uh, from Marine Collectors with us talking more fish stuff. We have five characteristics of a perfect fish. If you're wondering what a healthy fish looks like, mm -hmm. or even like what we're gonna call perfect fish, this is it, and it's more than you think. But we're gonna start with the obvious one, uh, but you may not know what to even look for, which is number one, no signs of disease. What does it look like? Yeah, so I mean, first and foremost, you know, something's on the fish that's gonna kill it. Obviously not a perfect fish. Uh, no spots, no cloudy eyes, no torn fins, no cloudy fins, no infections. Uh, spots could be large as a grain of salt or it could be like a very fine dusting um, ick or velvet. Um, flukes, usually you'll see them on the eyes. Cloudy eyes, usually what follows. Um, that's usually caused by secondary bacterial infection. Um, sometimes you'll have like the edges of fins are kind of frayed and torn if they have flukes. Um, you know, just it should be very clean looking. It should just be the fish, nothing else on it. Yeah, I mean, if you look at that fish uh, and you're like, what is that little white spot? And take a minute, man. You're like, mm -hmm. you're going to bring this home to a pet and you're going to introduce this pet to your other pets. Mm -hmm. uh, and whatever it has is going to go uh, on to the other one. So yep. take a minute and just like watch its behavior. Like this is something you're going to own, man, for probably a decade. Mm -hmm. So take that 20 minutes to just watch its behavior. Look for the little white spots on it. Now, if it looks kind of like powdered sugar or dusty, it could be mm -hmm. really bad velvet. If it looks like little salt grains and there's not quite as many of them, often ick. Mm -hmm. uh, if it looks like the skin is slothing off, it's a uh, <laughs> brook. Uh, if it looks like weird little chunky nodules on the fins, mm -hmm. this one might actually be okay. Yeah, so if it looks, uh, it's called cauliflower syndrome or cauliflower disease. Basically, it's just a uh, buildup of epithelial cells, uh, skin cells. Um, usually you'll see it on like angelfish, butterflies, the edges of the fins, sometimes on the body, but most of the time it's on the fins. Um, and it's really just a virus, just the fish has to fight it off on its own, but it's usually not contagious, not life threatening. It's just aesthetically, it doesn't look great. Um, if the fish does have it and it's at a store or it just came in from a wholesaler or something, usually it's from medications. Copper actually exacerbates it a lot. Um, and it can take a little while to come or to go away. Um, you could I've also, seen it go away every time. Yeah, I mean, you could also manually remove it. it doesn't need to be done, but you could if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, if it looks like actual large nodules, it's nothing to worry about. Salt to powder, bad news. Yeah. Chunky little nodules, mm -hmm. maybe not. <laughs> uh, it's much bigger. It looks yeah. very, very different. Uh, but also cloudy eyes. What does cloudy eyes tell you? So usually it's some type of secondary infection. Um, a lot of times flukes will go straight to the eyes. Flukes are um, small little worms that uh, lay flat. Most of the time they're clear, so you can't really see them. If you like just catch it at an angle and the light hits it, they'll kind of be this little translucent uh, like kidney oval shape. Um, but for the most part, that's what it'll look like. Um, sometimes they're on the body. And if the fish is turning and you can see uh, laterally down the body of the fish, you can see little cloudy flakes, almost looks like through the scales of the fish. Um, it's more difficult to see on the body. Uh, usually it'll be like a smooth skinned fish, like an Achilles that you'll be able to see it really clearly on. Um, but yeah. But the eyes are like the yeah. secondary, like I can't see it on the fish, but if the eyes are cloudy. Yeah, usually <laughs> the eyes are something fluke related. Okay, what is a uh, uh, fin problem suggest? So, uh, oh, fin issue could be multiple things. Um, sometimes if the fish has actually been in transit for a long time, uh, you'll see that the edges of the fins will start to fray because the fish was hypoxic um, and there wasn't enough uh, oxygenation getting to the extremities. But if it's not and the fish has been in a system for a while, a lot of times that can be flukes as well. They'll actually eat away at the edges of the fins. Um, so we're basically just looking for no signs of disease at all. Mm -hmm. And if you see any of this stuff, you do not need this fish that bad. Yeah. Uh, let it go because there's no reason to bring that home and then infect all your other fish with what this thing has because it's a parasite. Mm -hmm. It's not like a sickness, like a cold in most cases. Yeah. If, the, if you introduce the parasite, it's going to infect the other fish. If, uh, if the fish is yawning a lot or like twitching his head, a lot of times you'll see it with angelfish. It's a sign of gill flukes. Uh, those you won't be able to see. You actually have to look at it under a microscope. Um, most of the time, they're not life-threatening, but still, you know, if you've got like a really expensive collection, like some of us do, probably don't want to introduce that into the tank. 
I'll tell you that there is one uh, reason why this might not matter. Uh, no signs of disease is if you're a person that quarantines them uh, properly, <laughs> it really won't matter because you're going to treat for all of these mm -hmm. things and it won't have them. And in fact, the reality is, is it probably has one of these things yeah. in some amount. And so just proactively treating them all with like the 80, 20 quarantine mm -hmm. method or something similar to that yeah. uh, is probably the best uh, avenue in the case you don't really care. But if you gave me two options, one that has clear signs of disease and one doesn't, I'll pick the one that doesn't for sure. Uh, but you can actually turn these fish around. You've shown me mm -hmm. so many photos where the thing is just covered in velvet. Mm -hmm. And I would have told you 100 out of 100 fish are gonna die. And then you show them to me in a week, which is fine. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'm kind of shipped a little short of a week, but it, like the take fish yeah. totally turns around. Maybe like a couple of weeks, but yeah, you know. It's, it's, oh. it's astonishing. Yeah. <laughs> Most fish are actually savable, even when they do have severe infection. It's just got to know what to do. Uh, all that information is in the 8020 series, though. You've shown me fish actually where if you Googled ick and you're watching a fish or mm -hmm. that looked certain that it's going to die, that's what you show me. And in two weeks, it looks just fine. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would call it, if I hadn't seen it, I would have called it unrecoverable. Mm -hmm. For sure, you should just euthanize that fish. Wrong answer. Uh, all right, number two is sourced closest to the point of uh, collection is actually a characteristic of a perfect fish. Why is that? So this is personal belief anecdotal uh, evidence, but I personally think that anytime that you get a fish as close to the point of collection, the better it's going to be just because fish, though they do make it a long way and they come from all around the world. And, you know, we've kept fish from, you know, the farthest reaches of the globe. It's just, they're not meant to be handled. You know, if you think about a fish's uh, morphology, it's a fish or it's an animal that is suspended in solution all the time, not being touched ever. You know, and then you have it in a scenario where it's being caught, it's being bagged, it's being moved into tanks, into other tanks. It's a lot of handling. It's a lot of stress. Um, so the amount of, uh, I guess, uh, stops that you can cut out of that process is always going to benefit the fish. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it doesn't always go like this, but it could very easily yeah. be go get caught uh, in uh, Indonesia, you know, Red mm -hmm. Sea, Fiji, whatever brought onto the beach, hung out there for a while, brought to a facility, hung out there for a while, shipped to LA, hung out there for a mm -hmm. while, shipped to a local wholesaler in your area, sat there for a while, uh, shipped to, uh, uh, or picked up and brought to the local fish store, sat there for a while till you yep. bought it, then brought there, brought finally brought it home. Okay, 100% sure, dude. I, you say anecdotal, I say common sense. <laughs> The, the more <laughs> that you remove, the more likely it is that uh, you're going to have successful results and disease and parasites are going to overwhelm it. Yeah. It's not going to have starved. Like we've talked about purple queen anthias. Mm -hmm. like, the biggest problem here is like you nobody's been feeding it as frequently as it mm -hmm. needs to through that entire process. So by the time you it ends up yeah. wherever you're going to get it from, it, it's too late. You can't mm -hmm. turn it or back around. OK, so you said earlier when we were talking about this, how would I achieve the closest point of collection? And you actually said one of your competitors. <laughs> uh, well, so it's funny because I said Live Aquaria when we were talking about the, that conversation. And it's because Live Aquaria drop ships a lot of fish out of LA. So if you think about the um, connection points, you have fish that are coming from overseas to LA, exporting drop ships straight to your house. It's only two stops opposed to you know lands in la turns around uh goes, goes to a to different wholesaler goes to a store goes to whatever um to your house at the end you know uh, there's obviously tons of stores around the uh, country that import direct like i know new wave they bring stuff in direct all the time mm -hmm. um you know it's just uh if you can figure out the supply chain of where that fish came from and where you can pull it uh, so that it doesn't have to have all these additional stops, the better off the fish is going to be and the stronger it usually is. So this is the way that I would see it, uh, how I would take that information and then apply it and get mm -hmm. some, you know, better for my house is one is something like a live aquaria, but there's a bunch of brands out yeah. there that doesn't actually, have to that one. They, when they say drop ship, it means that there is a wholesale facility mm -hmm. in LA 
that imports all this stuff and there are it never even leaves that facility. It doesn't yeah. go to, you know, one of these brands. Mm -hmm. It just turns around and ships right back out of there. Yep. Okay. So in that uh, case, and I think Live Aquaria has changed hands. They might actually house some of their own fish uh, in yeah. their new facility. But like that's the same example, though. They're actually skipped out the dropship mm -hmm. people and they're doing it themselves. So that's an example. Another example is somebody like you, mm -hmm. uh, where you go down, you get an order for a fish, or you mm -hmm. go down to the wholesaler, you pick out the ones that uh, you like and think are the most healthy, and they go through a quarantine process, and then you ship them out uh, yeah. to the customer, right? Which is, you know, a version of that. It did take one more stop at your place, mm -hmm. but it's taking one more stop at your place because you're doing all the quarantine work for the person that does not get to do it at home. Makes yeah. sense. The fish store can do it two ways too. Oh yeah, definitely. So, one is the worst possible way, I think, is just like, uh, we've said this in another video, the, the impulse buy of fish. Like, uh, they have to have fish there all the mm -hmm. time so that if you come and buy food, you might just want this fish while you're there. Yeah. Okay. Well, they can do it that way, and so be it. But they can also help you curate your tank. They can order the fish. Mm -hmm. So in the case, if you told them, hey, man, I want a long nose hawkfish, uh, they'll order you a fish, and when it lands, you can come get it and bring it to your house. In that case, it's coming from the same wholesaler. The only thing different is instead of going home, mm -hmm. it went to the fish store yeah. and you went and picked it up. Uh, and the fish store often has good relationships and stuff that they, mm -hmm. they tend to get, you know, some of the better stuff available than just the average Joe. Yeah. That's at least been my experience anyway. But also like Jen from New Wave. Mm -hmm. Some of them go even a step further and remove the LA out of it. Yeah. It might land in LA, but it immediately gets on another plane to land here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so got to stop out of it. Now the best fish stores actually have a direct relationship with the collectors. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. This is, I can't really speak to what everyone else does, but I'll just say like for us, uh, if we can justify doing the shipment direct, usually it's a matter of freight. Uh, and, finding enough of stuff to bring in all at once. But if we can, that's always the better option. Uh, like two weeks ago, we did a shipment with uh, Cans Marine. We got a bunch of fish in. They came straight from Australia to us. Uh, we had a trans shipper bring in the boxes for us because we only got like seven boxes or something. Mm -hmm. um, and those fish were never touched by anybody else but the people in Australia. You know, They went from Australia to us. There's tons of trans shippers around the country that do this all the time for stores. Great, another way to do it. You know, you don't have to necessarily order it direct yourself overseas. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that thing you said earlier, which is you said <laughs> anecdotal, but I'm gonna say common sense that if you want a healthy pet, the fewer hands that that pet mm -hmm. has gone through, the better, almost universally true. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next one here is five characteristics of a perfect fish. Number three, has good body weight. I bet you a lot of people don't know what to look for. Uh, so first telltale thing is if it's pinched behind the head. Uh, if it is, it's severely uh, malnourished. But if it if you're looking at it dead on yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's squished right behind its head, man, mm -hmm. this guy's skinny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other one is going to be this, uh, or you can see the actual spine down the middle of the fish. Um, usually, what it's caused by is the portion of meat. Um, above the spine is starting to compress and it's going to create that little line that runs down the length of the body. Um, Are there some times where that's normal? Yeah, so uh, with certain fish, honestly, they just almost always come in that way. Uh, Moorish idols under four inches are usually that way, but that's just because they're small and they don't have a ton of body weight to begin with. Uh, a lot of times blonde nasals will have that. Um, there's probably a couple others that are escaping me at the moment, but um, Usually, if you're looking down at the fish, it shouldn't be like the head and then this really, really compressed body. It should have this nice, uniform, rounded shape. <laughs> I mean, I guess I would go as far as to say, if you can see the rib cage, man, it's skinny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> generally, it's rib cage, but point made. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, if you can see that, you can look for the signs of body weight, because, like, what would, if it didn't have good body weight, why would that be bad? Uh, so, a lot of times, if the fish doesn't have good body weight, it's and it just came in, it's usually because it's been sitting somewhere for a long time and it hasn't been fed. Um, so just to share a little bit of, uh, I guess, the process. When the fish are collected, usually they'll go to a collection station, uh, they'll come off the boats, they'll go into holding tanks for a week or so where they purge the fish, meaning they don't feed the fish. 
uh, reason why is it keeps the bag water clean because a lot of times those fish are in transit for a long time. So they purge the fish, make sure that its intestines are cleared. Uh, that fish will then go into the box, come to a wholesaler or a transship or whoever it's going to, then it'll come into a tank, probably stressed out, probably not gonna eat for a few days. And a lot of times those fish just go right back out. Um, but sometimes, especially like around uh, these past couple of years with COVID, like fish have been coming in not great condition. Um, like if you're just a hobbyist and you've been watching the amount of fish and the types of fish and the condition that the fish are coming in, like you'll notice that they're significantly uh, worse condition than they used to be before COVID. And that's strictly because there wasn't enough freight space to actually get the fish regularly. Um, so they were just sitting for extended periods of time. Mm. Um, Couldn't get it on the plane. Yeah. So the, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, it's skinny, it's probably, it, but it's eating, it's probably got internal parasites. I don't really buy that uh, a healthy fish is gonna die from internal parasites. I mean, those, that's not like ick or something that's external where the parasite's having to uh, have like population density to affect the fish. That's constantly in the intestinal tract. Um, there are, of course, scenarios where, you know, if you have a weakened fish and it's got intestinal parasites and it's not eating very well, of course, it's probably not gonna help. Uh, but if it's new fish, it's been thin, it is eating well, you know, chances are it just sat for somewhere too long along the way, you know, in all those steps. Okay, that actually ties back to uh, source to the closest mm -hmm. point of collection because, I mean, this is not a universal truth, but there's probably a reasonable degree of truth in that the skinnier it is, the furthest it was away from the point of collection. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I, I would, wouldn't be surprised if that was not always true, but if these things have a real strong correlation. Yeah. All right, number uh, uh, four, if five characteristics of a perfect fish is eats readily. Mostly true, not always. Okay, so this one, I always say this is a caveat because I think that depending on the fish, it might be perfectly fine, healthy, and it's still not eat, and that's just because the fish isn't comfortable. Um, but if it's a relatively robust fish, and it's the type of fish that should be coming out and eating, um, it should eat readily. The only exceptions to that would be if it's like naturally a cryptic fish, and this is gonna go back to, you should do the research uh, before you buy the fish. Um, really good examples like multi-bar angels. They're incredibly cryptic, they like dark, environments, they live under coral and like really dense rock structures. Uh, they're not the type of fish that actually comes out into the open. Um, you know, sometimes it'll be like a copper band or something. You know, a lot of times they like to eat off the substrate, not out of the water column. It doesn't mean that the fish is bad and it's not going to eat, it just might mean that it's not just that it's not eating right now. You know, I think about this like again in terms of any pet, like if I was going to go pick up a puppy but it wasn't eating, mm -hmm. No way, man. Like, uh, <laughs> there's something wrong here, right? Uh, and so, like, not always with fish. Like, there's just there's some stress things and change mm -hmm. of environment and stuff, and it may not be eating. So it, just because it isn't eating mean it doesn't mean it's bad. But if it is eating, it definitely means good. You know what's a good example is um, hark and tusk, particularly the ones out of Australia. Like everyone thinks that they're this aggressive, like really uh, bold fish, but they're really not. They're incredibly shy. Um, and it's because they live in these like open areas where they have like a coral mound and they just live underneath it. And they very rarely will come out into the open. And uh, it's the type of fish that when it goes into a tank, maybe like it doesn't have a lot of structure to hide, it'll kind of just wall up against, you know, uh, something to try to wedge itself. It's not that that fish isn't a hardy fish. It probably is. And as soon as you walk away, if you drop something in there, as soon as it feels comfortable, it'll eat. But maybe it won't come out and eat right there in front of you in that moment. You know, Just a shyer fish? Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's just one of those fish that's like, you would think that it would be really aggressive because it's got a big mouth, it's got big teeth, and it's just really shy. <laughs> that's very interesting. Yeah. Particularly when they're new. You know, obviously when they bolden up they can be a lot more aggressive. But uh, after you have them for a yeah. while, uh, they tend to lose their shyness. Yeah, what do you think? but uh, when they're fresh, yeah, they're super shy. All right, uh, number five characteristic of a perfect fish is alert. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I bet you 90% of people are not looking for this. Uh, <laughs> what does alert mean? Uh, so it doesn't necessarily mean swimming around, but in my mind it is that the fish is using its eyes and looking around. 
like fish can be wedged up in some PVC or under a rock or something, but if they're consciously looking around, usually that's a pretty good indication. If the fish is just comatose, the eyes are locked and it's not really looking around, not a good fish. All right, so look for it to be paying attention of its surroundings. Yeah. Is it watching you? Is it watching the other uh, fish in, mm -hmm. in there? Does it have uh, uh, reactions to changes? Yeah. Uh, if something darts at it, mm -hmm. or uh, will it respond? Yep. Uh, if it doesn't, it's just kind of listless, probably not a good fish. So those are the five signs of a perfect fish. If you're looking for no signs of disease, you're looking for a closest point to collection, good body weight, eats readily, alert. If you hit all that stuff, man, you're probably gonna do pretty darn good. We actually have a whole bunch of these videos with Elliot mm -hmm. and I, if you wanna see them all, you can find them in the playlist right here. And there's gonna be another one soon. So hit that subscribe.